Thank you very much for the introduction, and uh, also I'm very happy to talk here. And uh, yeah, today I'm going to talk about this uh, subject, Mother Tars Map for Real Analytic Flat Circle Bundles. And this is a joint work with uh, Teruaki Kitano and Shigeyuki Morita. Uh, can you see the pictures of them? Uh, and uh, be, be, But before getting into this subject, I, I would like to uh, look to look back some personal history of my with Paul Schweitzer with Paul a little bit. So I met him first. I believe it it, it was in eighty three in in August, right after the Congress in eighty two in Wal Warsaw. Uh, Congress 82 was postponed to 83 uh, as uh, Takashi Tsuboi introduced last that, uh, ye yesterday and also Pavel uh, introduced the population conference in Krakow which was held right after the Warsaw Congress and uh, here are some pictures so I, I, I try to share some picture with you. So this is a picture from the conference, Krakow conference. And here are the participants. And uh, Pavel was the, the, there, Takashi was there, and also, of course, Paul is here. And uh, the next time I, ah, this, this is also from the, the 83, but uh, we visited Auschwitz and uh, everybody was so exhausted, but uh, after the visiting, visit of Auschwitz, uh, Paul came back with ice cream in a hot, very hot summer day, but they, he was still in a good shape. <laughs> but every other people are so exhausted and then that next time i i think i i i met him in 91 in june Ju, june or july in a memorial conference of uh, uh Bion and uh, martini in strasbourg and uh, I had a conversation with Paul with some other person in toilet, and uh, they are they are talking about the foundation conference in coming January January in eighty uh, ninety two so in in Rio de Janeiro. So I immediately talked to Paul and uh, to let me come to the let me join the. Uh, conference and then I stayed there and also 93 uh, I, I spent a couple of weeks in Pukki and uh, in the same year we had a foundation conference in Tokyo and and so on and this is a picture from 96 August in Tijuca uh, some some of the local max maximum of the uh, works in uh, Tiju Tijuca forest, and the two thousand one also we had a very big conference in Puki, and uh, in other years also we have some some here here are some from some oh. photos from two thousand one also. So Larry, Larry is here also. And uh, wait. In 2013, we had a foundation conference again in Tokyo, uh, and 2003 also. And uh, in both cases, we had the so called Big Gamma School after the conference. And uh, there, Paul gave a really, really excellent. 
expository lectures on Gerfant Fuchs cohomology, and it was so nice. And even in 2013 case, he he proposed to so so in that B gamma school second, uh, we had a, a tutorial classes. Uh, exercise classes every lunchtime and every evening. And some young young mathematicians are helping us very much. And he proposed to award them a kind of appreciation. And it was really nice. And and so on. So uh, they, are, they are not the tutor, but so he, he talked a lot with younger people. But still, uh, BM school, we are treating the homotopy theory of foliations, but uh, Mother Thurston material and uh, also uh, real analytic stuff has, haven't yet been well treated. So today I'm going to talk about something related to such objects. So I owe a lot in this way. I owe a lot to Paul, and thank you, thank you very much for these nice relations. Then I want to start my. I, I'm sorry, I I jumped too much. Yes. So I, first I will talk something about the motivations of problems, big problems. And uh, then I will take a quick quick overview of the Mother Thurston theory. And uh, the same for the Hefliger group, which is the fundamental group of the classifying space of real analytic co-dimension one foliation. And, uh, and then, we consider the Mother Thurston map for real flat real analytic circle product. And then what happens in the map? And uh, so so that's the that is what I want to go into uh, talk about today. Okay. Can you see clearly? Yeah, that's good. Centered and fine. Okay. So now let's fix some notations and uh, and B gamma one bar omega. This is the classifying space for codimension one. We have a now transversely real analytic and also transversely oriented foliations. And this is known to be a, a kind of K pi one space. So the higher homotopy vanishes, but uh, it has a huge pi one. And unlike other B gamma bar Q, B, B gamma Q bar. So this is a for, uh, classifying space for foliation of codimension Q with tri trivialized normal bundles. And for codimension Q foliation, this space is known to be Q plus one connected. Some conjecture says that uh, it might be Q, two Q connected, but I'm not not at all responsible for that. But anyway, uh, so this is for smooth foliations, but for real analytic one, and uh, especially in particular, if the codimension is equal to one, it is K by one. And uh, so this is a classifying space for some for some discrete group. And so the fundamental group is called the Hefliga group. It's a huge and perfect group. And its structure is not well known, not well understood. So one of the problem that we want to consider is, so can, can, can we see something 
some, something more about this group and uh, for real analytic foliations also the following question is really interesting and looks very difficult that is if you take a real analytic flat circle boundary and consider the the Euler class as a circle bundle. And uh, so we know very famous examples of such flat circle bundles with non trivial Euler class. And uh, usually the, the example is given by real analytic ones. So we know that the, the Euler class is not, uh, is, is not trivial. But we don't know if it's square, it's cube, and it's a higher power as vanishes or not. And especially in the classifying space, and also uh, in in the rational coefficient. So a finite cyclic group action tells us that uh, in a integral coefficient. It is not trivial, but it's it it's not so interesting, and uh, we don't know even the square is not uh, it is not is non-trivial or not. On the other hand, in the smooth case, flat S one bundles, uh, the 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 powers of the Euler classes are all non-trivial. So if you take any power of the Euler class in the classifying space. It is not trivial, <coughs> even a rational coefficient. And the first, it was proved by Morita in 84. And uh, then soon later, Jason Seljesk proved, proved the same statement again, but by a quite different way. And uh, for the first early stage, Hefriga pointed out that uh, using Mor Morita's method up to a halfway, uh, it must be proved slightly in a different way and rather in a simple way. And uh, Nariman wrote down it in, in his paper and uh, then two years ago, Morita and Kitano and myself uh, found a similar formulation, but slightly different proof. But so in some sense, we have four proofs, but all proofs need the mother Thurston theory for this. So there is no proof without using Manhattan theory for this, for this fact. So, but the, so the first motivation is to apply Manhattan theory for C omega flat S1 bundle. But uh, in some sense, Manhattan theory tells that uh, homology or boldism equivalence between the uh, non-flat circle bundles and, and flat, flat circle bundles. The space of uh, the set of flat bundles and the uh, set of non-flat usual circle bundles. And they must be in some sense uh, boldism equivalent in, under the Bodhism sense. And that is one interpretation of Mother Thurston theory. And uh, in that way, we have to do some surgery in the proof. So in real analytic case, there is no reason that, uh, or uh, there is no hope that Mother Thurston theory really uh, holds. But uh, 
if we look at that map, Mother Thurston map, so I will, we we call what is the Mother Thurston map, but uh, then something interesting we can find. That is what I'm going to talk about. And it, it is uh, only a small part of the Hefligard's group, but we we will start we 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 feel that we we be we began to understand little by little the structure of Hefriga group in this way. So to fix the notation, I, I'm sorry, I, I go back a little bit, scroll back a little bit. No, maybe the next slide. So uh, for, for the group of different office of the circle, which preserves the orientation, usually it is denoted by G. And uh, for the differentiability, basically today, I take C infinity case or C omega case, but uh, mostly C omega case. And uh, till implies the universal covering. And if I put delta, then, it means that the group, the topology of the group is taken to be discrete. Okay, this is a notation. And the mother Thurston map gives us the, from the classifying space of the universal covering group of the real analytic diffeomorphisms of the circle made discrete to a free free loop space of the classifying map of the real analytic foliations. And uh, in this case, what we will see first is this is an injection. I'm sorry, on the group level, it's injection. So on the space level, we can consider it as a covering, a kind of covering map. And it is a kind of canonical inclusion as a, on the group level. And, but uh, maybe the other part is really, really big. And, uh, but uh, to look at, to look at, ah, the important point is uh, if you consider the, flat circle boundary, then. So T is a translation on the real line by adding one. So in this, using T, this uh, tra uh, translation, this group, the universal covering group, of the real analytic uh, diffeomorphism of the of the circle can be considered as the group of diffeomorphism, the real line, which commutes with this T. So it's in that sense, it's a centralizer. Then. The centralizer of this element in the Hefliga group plays an important role. And, uh, but the, I, so we can see that in the centralizer, this map, in, uh, this group injects, but the outside of, of this group in the centralizer, we can see a kind of outer world of the real line. So how it looks like the outer worlds? That is a second uh, observation. And then we can construct in a geometric way to a projection from this centralizer to this. 
but it's not on the group level. So, uh, but here we, there is a one big new machinery in analyzing the real analytic diffeomorphism in dimension one. So I will, I will tell you about the, that machinery and also about this projection. That is a final part of the talk. If I, if the time allowed me. So the notations, mostly I explained it. So I skip this one. So, so let's recall in a quick way that uh, what is the Mother Thurston theory? The Mother Thurston theory is something like this. If you, so let's consider the, uh, for, for, for the simplicity, uh, let's take a parallel, parallelizable manifold M and consider the for the M product, namely it's a product with, with some base space with the fiber M. So it's a, as a space, it's a product and the product structure is fixed. And we have a foliation which is transverse to the fibers. That's a foliated product. And we fix a base point in the base space. And then, then it is nothing but the uh, suspension of the homomorphism from the base, the fundamental group of the base space to the diffeomorphism group of the, the fiber. But uh, to get really a foliated product we should take the universal covering of that, or it's rather, it's it's better to consider in the following way: uh, it's a it's a it's a, a group of path. It, it's uh, so it's it's an equivalence cl homotopy class of the path in the diffeomorphism group, which starts at the at the uh, identity, and. Uh, we take the homotopy, which preserves both ends, and take take the quotient, and then it's then it is naturally uh, regarded as the universal covering of the connected component, and this is the classifying space for ah uh, I'm sorry, uh, this is a structural group for the foliated product, and uh, so in this way uh, we you get a foliation from the product space. So you have a classifying map to the classifying space of uh, foliations. Then consider the adjoint map of this. Then we get a map from the base space to the space of maps from the Fiber to the classifying space. Okay, so this map is the adjoint of this one. And Mother Thurston map is the so consider the uni universally what we 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 have is from this adjoint map is this one. That's the mother first map. And uh, for low differentiability or in a smooth case, this gives you a homology equivalence or rather it might be better to say bodies equivalence. That's the mother first theory. Up to here, is it all right? If you have a question, please ask me. Okay. And for example, if we take as a fiber, so the fiber fiber manifold can be uh, a pair, and if you take the Euclid, Q dimension Euclidean space, 
and uh, consider the end of uh, the outside of a compact set. And we take the pair of this. So we, we consider the re relative version of this mother Thurston map. And then what we get is as a, as a group of diffeomorphism side, so we consider the diffeomorphism of the Euclidean space, which is compact, compactly supported, and consider the group of such diffeomorphism and uh, take the uh, connected component, identity component, and consider the uh, universal covering of it. Then it is homology, homolo, uh, hom the mother thurston map gives the homology equivalence between the in this case, the map from this to B gamma is nothing but the Q4 uh, pointed loop space. And uh, we know that this group is perfect. And we we had already taken a Q4 uh, loop space, a looted pointed loop loop space that gives you the Q plus one connectivity of B gamma Q bar in a smooth case. So we know that the Q connected. The, this space is Q connected by Hefliger's work and uh, applying Mother Thurston theory with the perfectness of this group, then we, we gain one more connectivity in this way. This is really a uh, really important uh, application of Mother Thurston theory in B gamma story. And uh, also, the Hefliger's Q connectivity proof is done by only by H principle. And uh, this is another story, but uh, Thurston's H principle for two dimensional foliation works without knowing the gamma structure information. So, if you apply Thurston's H principle for two dimensional foliations, then also without using uh, Mother Thurston theory, we can show that the Q plus one connectivity of the B, B, B gamma Q bar in a smooth case. Okay, so another look at, uh, so take a, another example and then that is the Morita's theorem of the non-vanishing non-triviality of the powers of the Euler class so in this case we take the circle bundle so we consider the circle flat circle bundles so over over this so g is the group of diffeomorphisms of the smooth diffeomorphisms of the circle which preserves the orientation and delta is implies that topology is made discrete and consider that such uh, the classifying space of the such. And over this classifying space, of course, we have a universal flat circle band like this. And in fact, the total space can be considered as a universal uh, uh, classifying space for the universal covering group made discrete. So here, the then then again, we we have a universal flat circle pro product here because in this case we have a canonical uh, cross section. So for this group. Universal flat circle bound 
is considered to be a, a flat circle product. So we can apply the mother Thurston theory. So a priori, the mother Thurston map goes from here to there, to the, uh, to, in this case, this is a, a, a absolute version, not a relative version. And uh, so we, here we don't have any fixed uh, base points. So the map goes to the free loop space of big gamma one bar. And the Morita analyzed the action of uh, integers here. And uh, so here is a free loop space. And we can consider the doubling and the tripling. And the, so the loop can be multiply covered and the, and such actions can be analyzed here by using rational homotopy theory because th this space is too connected that that is a really important point for Morita's work and the, he, analyzing that so he he obtained the no, non vanishing of the the any power of the Euler class in the uh, in this space and uh, with, with rational coefficient. But, and uh, so heavy Neumann's method and uh, our method also look at this uh, mother thurston map and then we go down to the Borel quotient of the circle action. Then also it, it gives you a, a pr proof of non-triviality non of the, the power of the Euler class. And here's a re related pro problem, which is which is sometimes called the Lost Theorem Thurston recently. So it means that the, so I'm not sure if it is really true or not, but or and uh, what Thurston did did say, it is not clear now. But uh, some people say that uh, Thurston said the third power should vanish. But e even the square, we don't know. But anyway, this is the so-called the Roth theorem of Thurston for real analytic flat, flat circle bundle. So Thurston, somewhere in 70s, uh, some people say that the uh, Sasson said for real analytic flat circle bundles, the third power must vanish. But first we have to check what happens for the, 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 the square, but, and already it's difficult enough. Okay, then the next thing to recall is a Hefliger group, as I told you, uh, it's a fundamental group of the classifying space of the codimension one real analytic foliation, which is transversely oriented. So as this space is k pi one, the fundamental group is nothing but that pi. And uh, from the classical Hefiger's work, we know that it, it is perfect and it is uncountably generated. So it's a huge perfect group. And uh, if you do look at the construction of classifying space by, uh, for example, by semi-simplicial construction, you will see that uh, the fundamental group is pre represented by the following object. He here Q is an orientable one-dimensional 
real analytic manifold with a base point and a little bit difficult point is that it is not necessarily a Hausdorff. So it it has it might it may have some no Hausdorff point, but it can it can be taken to be compact. And no Hausdorff point is not so complicated. And if it's a map from the base circle with base point to this real analytic manifold, which preserves the base point. And also, we have a coordinate chart at the base point of this real analytic manifold. It is fixed. So the base point should go to the zero of the, the real line. And this local chat local coordinate is fixed that is really important point but anyway uh, the fundamental group is represented by such triple and uh, as a group we have to say as a set we have to take the quotient of of the set of such objects by the, the homotopy of this map. Homotopy should preserve the base point. And also uh, we have to consider the integral homotopy of this real analytic manifold. Maybe you will see what I'm explaining in the following picture. So for example, if you take a local real analytic diffeomorphism G of a real line, so if you have a diffeomorphism like this, then you naturally you can construct such object and uh, you can consider it as a gamma structure, real analytic gamma structure on this uh, loop or uh, some space and consider the beef space of that gamma structure. That That is something, looks like something. So it, we have a map from the circle so the it preserves the base point. So the base point should go to in should go to this base point of the real line. Then go go up to um, maybe we have to follow in a reverse way. So the diffeomorphism goes like this. Then you construct this kind of folded space. And then the, the loop goes in the reverse direction. And uh, you consider the leaf space of this object that looks like this. And here you, you have a uh, you know, no those point, point of the real analytic manifold. And then you have a map from the circle uh, like this and uh, to, to, to this possibly no house dove compact uh, real analytic one dimensional manifold. So the elements of the Hefiger group is represented by such an R loop and also the any product of such loops. That's the Hefiger group. Now let's Take a look at the Mother Thurston map. What happens? So the time is not enough to explain all of this. But so so coming back to the Mother Thurston map in the foliated uh, foliated product in the real analytic case. So the target space is K pi one, and we have to look at the K pi one 
of the classifying space of the Hefiga group, and we have to take its free loop space. And in this case, so as a general theory, so it is known in the homotopy theory that the, if we take, if you take, so let's take a general discrete discrete group gamma and consider its classifying space and look at its uh, free loop space. Then, because this is a classifying space of the discrete group, it has a fundamental group gamma itself. And they even take the free loop space. It has a many, usually it has many connected components. And uh, the space is split into the following connected components. And uh, each connected component uh, corresponds to the conjugacy classes of the group. And each component, look, which corresponds to, for example, the conjugacy class of an element G is homotopy equivalent to the classifying space of the centralizer of this element. And uh, it can, so the proof is not difficult, but it, it is a kind of folklore. And if you consider the, the surface group and using a hyper, two dimensional elementary hyperbolic geometry, you, you, you can see what happens as an example of this folklore theorem, but uh, I will skip this one. Then what really happens in the case of flat real analytic circle bundle is that, so in our case, so the, as I told you, this group is the centralizer in the group of real analytic diffeomorphism of the real line, the centralizer of this T, T is the translation by one on the real line. So in this case, in our case, the, the component that our mother first map goes, goes to is nothing but the centralizer of this element. This element is, a, this is a loop which is determined by this translation. As I told you before, I, I saw the picture. If you pick up of some diffeomorphism, then you get a, you get an element of the fundamental group uh, of the classifying space. Then this is that loop in the in the Hefliger groups. So to make a distinction between T itself and uh, the the element which T determines in the Hefliger group. So in the Hefliger group we use this gamma T. And in the group of diffeomorphisms, group of diffeomorphisms, we, we use T. And uh, in the Hefriga group, we have to consider this centralizer of this element and consider the classifying space of that. This is the part that uh, our uh, mother Thurston map goes. And uh, in fact, this, uh, as I told you, we can see that this can be regarded as a, as a quite natural inclusion on the group level. So on the space level, it can be considered as a covering. But uh, I think this image as a group, the image is very small and not, not subjective. So there are some outer world of the real line. So what is the outer world? So the here here I draw the gamma t is the 
In fact, it should be a, a map from the circle to a real analytic manifold, but the real analytic manifold in this case for T is in fact a circle, natural circle, real analytic circle. And I draw its universal covering. And anyway, if you take a, an element of the central area, the, I mean, if you take a element of, from the Hefriger group, which commutes with gamma t, then you get, because it is commu commutative, so you get a map from the torus. And uh, this is the develop, developing map of the torus from the torus, and here indicated the gamma t, and here indicated the omega, the loop for the omega. And then using Hefiger's work and uh, some, some perturbation, using some perturbation, we, we can see that we, we always get such non-singular foliations on, on torus with, with canonical circle, transverse circle in this way. So we have to classify these pictures. So we, we are coming back to very classical elementary object of the foliations. And if you don't have any vertical, any vertical compact leaves, then you get this kind of picture. And then what you get is really the image of this group to the in the Hefriga group. That, that, that is what I call the canonical in inclusion. But if you have a vertical leaf like this, in between, you can see that, uh, for example, this real line, canonical real line, is nothing but the, this, in this foliated space, this part is nothing but this one, because we, we have this equivalence, po pointwise equivalence by leaves. And then also you, you get this wall, the, this in, open interval is equivalent to this long line, that is a outer wall. And naturally, T acts on this real line. So here you, you again get an uh, action of T and that is the outer world. So if you take more complicated foliation on the torus, you will have a lot of outer world. And uh, I, I draw a picture of this in this case, which kind of you know, house of manifold you have and uh, which kind of loop that you get as, as an element of the centralizer, which presents a, which represents a, an element of in the Hefriga group. And uh, so I don't have much time to go. So in this way, we have uh, an inclusion to the centralizer in the Hefriga group of gamma T of this universal covering group. And uh, as I told you, each element is represented by such pictures. So let's take the set of such pictures, such, such non-singular foliations on the torus. Then we can construct a projection from this space to this. And the point is that if you take this real line and this outer wall, and what is surprising in this real analytic setting is that, so here you have a holonomy of this compact, vertical compact leaf. So the holonomy detail is written like this. Then what happens is that, I'm sorry, I, I, I scroll down a little bit. So here is a fixed point of the holonomy. And on this side and on this side, you will have a pointwise, really pointwise correspondence, real analytic correspondence. And uh, 
which is equivalent for the action of these two this world and outer world. So here is the real line of, and here the holonomy acts on this real line. But the real the real line of the half of this interval is a part of this real line and a part of this the other part of this open interval is this outer world. And what I told you is that there is a pointwise correspondence between this original real line and the outer world. And in this way, you get a diffeomorphism from this real line to that outer world in an equivalent way with respect to the translation T. And then you get the next defeo, and next defeo, and then you come back to the original line by the, the final defeo. Each time you, you have a, a, this compact leaf, vertical compact leaf, you get some correspondence. That is, uh, it, it is, it doesn't happen in a smooth case, but in a real analogy case, this happens, even though you have such kind of lab components. So this is a projection, but I don't know if the projection really goes from the uh, Hefriger, uh, a part of the Hefriger group, the centralizer. So if it go down, goes down, we can see much more about the structure of the Hefriger group. So that is what we are now trying to do. So we should, we want to push it down. So this is uh, all what I want to say. So thank you very much for, for the attention. And uh, so here is a picture for the proof of the, the correspondence, but uh, maybe I, I will explain in uh, another opportunity. So thank you very much and uh, happy, happy anniversary to Paul maybe next five years, 10, ten years, and, and so on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yoshi. Are there any questions? Yes, okay, let's thank the speaker again. Oh. Ah, there is one. Is in fact, uh, I will dare to ask a question that I never dare to ask. Uh, what does it mean uh, geometrically that the square or the cube of the Euler class is uh, zero or is not zero? Uh, have you an idea? Ah, that's a good question. Because uh, even for the smooth case, yeah. we know that from the theorem, there must be example. So four dimensional cycles, which suppose the, no, the non-vanishing square of the Euler class, but nobody knows a concrete example. So in some sense, the, the Euler class may be represented by some symplectic structures or symplectic forms in on the symplectic manifold because the square is not vanishing, but I don't know. So just we know that the, in smooth case, it does not vanish. There must be many examples, but no one knows concrete examples. That's, that, so if you follow the proof of other guys proof are really not tractable, but uh, if you follow the Morita's proof, then we can some hope that we can construct, but uh, at some point it's really, it's coming back to the homotopy theory or Bordism theory. So it's really hard to construct 
geometric example. So I don't know the geometric meaning. Any other questions? Okay, let's thank Yoshi again. And the next talk is in few minutes.